Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today is a crazy day because I made the decision a couple of days ago to pull out my entire Madonna collection to show you. And right now it is laid across my entire floor, which is insane. I'm not looking forward to packing this up. But hopefully, even if you're not a Madonna fan, you will find some of this interesting. I'll also share some little stories and moments of my life with Madonna. So sit back and relax and let's get going. Good morning! I have just spent the last hour clearing as much space as I can. I'm actually a little nervous that it's all not going to fit on this level and I'm going to have to use the stairs. But then I was starting to freak out last night that if I had my records stacked up on the stairs then maybe one would fall over and end up with a domino effect all the way down and wreck my pristine copies of my vinyls. So let's just see! But let's start way back in 1982. Okay, so back in 1982, I was all of four years old. I hadn't even reached primary school yet, and there was Madonna out there already releasing music, and she released her first single called Everybody. And then she released Burning Up. So in 1983, Madonna released her first album titled Madonna, which had three extra singles, had Holiday, Lucky Star, and Borderline, and I'm just gonna lay them all out here, because I don't really have any stories. From 1983, I was too busy dancing around to Olivia Newton-John. I do, however, remember as a teenager buying this unique Australian cover of holiday. I bought it for $5 at a record store that was just near the train station I used to get off at school. Um, I don't think you'll ever find it for $5 anymore though. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to talk about 1984 and 1985 together because those two years were quite a busy one for Madonna. She released her amazing Like A Virgin album. But at the same time, she was in two movies, Vision Quest, which was called Crazy For You here in Australia, and the awesome Desperately Seeking Susan. So not only was she releasing singles from the Like A Virgin album, but there were singles released from those movies as well, all intertwined. So a quick little story about this cassette is this is the, probably the first time I came into contact with Madonna's music. My sister owned this Australian cassette. She used to listen to it a lot and I used to listen to it a lot. Yeah, so like I was saying before, uh, Madonna was releasing music from her movies as well as her album. And one of those songs was Into the Groove. And I remember my sister and I used to play a game of 20 questions where we had to try to guess um, a song and the song I would always pick was the song called Into the Groove which eventually ended up as a bonus track on her Like a Virgin album but the question my sister would always ask me is is this song off an album and I would have to say no because Into the Groove as an amazing song as that was did not get released officially on an album other than as a bonus track on the Like A Virgin album. Okay, so my favourite items from this era would definitely be my over and over 7 inch and 12 inch. This single was only released in Italy and I think maybe the Philippines had a, had a single of it too. And 
yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, so this 12 inch version comes with a fold out poster, which wasn't included in the version that I bought off this couple of years ago, but then I found somebody online who was selling the poster. I actually think that the paper stock is too new for it, but this is what the poster would look like. But I don't think it's an original, but at least I get to include it in my 12 inch. It was a really busy time for Madonna and it only got more busy in 1986. In 1986, Madonna released this epic album titled True Blue, which became and still is her highest selling studio album to date. It had five amazing singles, Live to Tell, Papa Don't Preach, True Blue, Open Your Heart, and La Isla Bonita. And let me lay this collection out for you and I'll show you a couple of my favorite items from it. show you some of my favorite items from this era. Now there was two Australian casingles and they were just testing out casingles at the time. So there was a casingle for Papa Don't Preach and for True Blue. They're really quite unique. I love them. So this re-release of the True Blue album came with an awesomely huge poster advertising Madonna's Who's That Girl to her. So I wanted to show you the poster because it is well worth it. Look at this beautiful poster. It's so gorgeous. It may seem like I don't have many stories about me and Madonna yet, but they are definitely coming. But we have hit 1987, which was the Who's That Girl era. The film and the tour that came along with it. It had three great singles from, from this um, original soundtrack and I'm just gonna lay them out now. Okay, so we have hit Christmas 1987 and this is my very first Madonna item, my very first Madonna cassette, which is the You Can Dance remix album, which one of the reasons why I really wanted it is that it had Into the Groove on here. So this kind of started the ball rolling for this, but it wasn't really until 1990 that I got into collecting Madonna music. So let me lay out the You Can Dance albums and I will show you some really cool items from it and then we've got to move on because this vlog is going to take forever. Okay, so by the way, some of my favorite items over my entire Madonna collection are these four record promos. What I think so beautiful about them is they've got different artwork than the original album and they're just beautiful. I love them. So now I have filled up this entire area here. I have all this floor space here, all of this floor space here. I think this is the way I'm going to have to travel, but I'm starting to worry that I'm going to run out of room. I've just moved the dining table over to there. So I've got all of this space and I'm going to start running down this way now. So we're not going to be on the same angle but I think it just gets a little confusing to film that way. So let's get on to 1989 when I was, how old was I? And here we are in 1989, the year Madonna released her most personal album to date. It is beautiful and I think it stands the test of time. It's the album Like a Prayer, which had a whole bunch of groundbreaking songs including Like a Prayer, Express Yourself, Cherish, to name a few. But also, this was the time when Madonna had a deal with Pepsi and they famously pulled it after she released her Like a Prayer video, which 
had her dancing in front of burning crosses. I just don't think they got what the clip was about. If you get the chance, have a watch of it, but let me lay out all my Like A Prayer stuff. So the sixth single of Like A Prayer was Keep It Together. And before they released it, they asked Madonna if she could record a new song as the B-side. And she went into the studio with Shep Pettibone and accidentally wrote one of her biggest songs of all time called Vogue, which didn't end up as the B-side for Keep It Together. Um, as you are well aware, it was its own song that was eventually released on her Dick Tracy inspired album I'm Breathless. Vogue was the very first CD single that I ever bought. It's 1990, I've just hit high school, and this album changed my Madonna life. And this is when I started to become obsessed with her, and when really all of this collection really started off. Yeah, so this album is Madonna's highest selling album to date. How can it not be? It is so good. Let me lay all of these out for you and then I am going to show you some cool things. So let's just do a quick little unboxing of the Royal Box, but let's have a look at the front and beautiful back cover where Madonna performed Vogue at the MTV Music Awards. It was amazing. So let's open her up and see what's inside the Royal Box. Come on. Some more pictures. Beautiful poster. I'll open that up in a second. It came with a satin covered Immaculate Collection CD. Now the US version had a different print on the disc and I still need to get that, but it's so pretty. Also came with a VHS of the videos of the album and some postcards. Let's have a look at this poster. And here is the beautiful poster as well. Okay, let's pack this up. Probably the rarest CD of Madonna's that I own. It is a promo of Holiday when it was re-released for the Immaculate Collection. It's pretty simple, it just has one song on it, but I love it. 
The year is 1991 and Madonna releases her awesome documentary called In Bed With Madonna, also named Truth or Dare in other parts of the world. Now, I was not allowed to go and see this movie. My parents said, nope, you are not seeing this movie. So within the first week, I think, I had a day off school, I think. It must have been school holidays and I bought myself a ticket. I went and saw it. My parents found out and I got grounded. Give it another week or two, and what did I do? I did it again. I went and saw the movie, got grounded again, and what can you do? How can you not go and see this movie? It's really good. Well, now we're at the point of the album that is my all-time favorite Madonna album. Just, there's another one that's very, very close, so close, but the album is Erotica. This album has had a massive influence on me. It had six amazing singles that came off this album. Well, at least in Australia, we got all six singles. This is a really cool item. It is Erotica, Madonna, World First Release, Limited Edition, number 95, Virgin Megastores, 19th of October, 1992. Now, I was way too young to be able to stand outside the Virgin Megastore at midnight when this album was released, but I managed to get a copy of this quite a few years later. It's so cool that you could actually buy a framed copy of the album. When it came to this very famous book, Madonna's Sex Book, I remember going to Kmart, out of all places, Kmart, when the album was released and seeing these in a glass cabinet. You could actually buy Madonna's sex book at Kmart. Hasn't times changed? Now, I remember my sister was there with me and she said, I'm not buying that for you. So I had to wait until I was well and truly an adult before getting a copy of this. Decision time. We'll go on the table or under the table. I think I will finish Erotica off on the table. This CD single in 1993, I bought on the way to my very first Madonna concert, The Girly Show. We're gonna go upstairs now and have a look at my Girly Show collection. Here we are on a slight little detour. I've come all the way upstairs because it is time to show you my favorite, favorite part of my collection, my Girly Show tour collection. Now, The Girly Show was the very first tour that I ever got to go to and I had to beg my parents to allow me to go. I could only go if my auntie was going to chaperone me and my cousin, and she did, and we got tickets to the second of the three shows in Melbourne. Now this would have to be one of my all-time favorite items. This huge two meter by 1.5 meter street poster came into my hands about three, four years ago. I couldn't believe it that I could actually buy, someone still had a street poster that was for sale. So right here on my table is my original. Now I don't have my original framed, 
have a replica framed. Strangely enough, if you have a look at my Taylor Swift vlog, you will see me unwrapping this baby, but I'm not gonna do it today. I might show you some footage. It's so delicate that I wanna keep it in its best and original condition. And I actually really, really like how pristine the remake is. It's beautiful. Now, let's have a look at some more of my girly show items. I actually don't know where to start. So let's actually start at my scrapbook. Now, I've had this scrapbook since 1993 when I made it and had it contacted with my favorite picture of Madonna on the front. And I essentially collected as many of the articles I could find at the time from the tour. So this is probably one of the oldest items that I kept because I did sell a whole bunch of my Madonna collection at one point. I didn't sell it all but most of it was gone but I kept this baby thankfully because I treasure it so much now and since then I've had to add a whole nother scrapbook which is here of more and more and more early show articles that I've collected over the last few years. Now when I was at the tour there's only two things that I managed to buy. That's all I had. I was pretty poor. So I got myself a girly show program, which if we have a look inside, and I've got three of them, would you believe? But if you have a look inside, I always loved this see-through mask. But I want to show you, there's a picture in here that I'm looking for. It's a really nice program, actually. I really like it. It's beautiful. But the picture is this baby here, which I have always adored. And I drew this back in probably 93, 94. Um, and I haven't drawn for ages, but yeah, I would have been about 16 when I drew that picture. There you have it. The other item that I bought at the tour was this girly show t-shirt. Well, not exactly this one. I wore mine into the ground, but I've always loved this one because it has all the Australian dates on the back. Now, when Madonna did her celebration tour this year and last year, um, she released some replicas of items from the girly show. One of which is this beautiful t-shirt, which I got here. But on the back, it's got the celebration tour. And one of my favorite items, oh, this amazing girly show sort of denim jacket that's all embroidered. I think originally these jackets were for the crew and I still wanna get an original one that actually has the Frontier Touring Company logo similar to this one here embroidered on it too but I've not been able to find one in my size. This small is even way too big on me but I really like it. Also from the Celebration Tour they remade these beautiful leather masks, Dita masks and also I love these, I've always wanted these, um, whoop, nudie pens. It's so funny. And a little peep show. I wonder if you can see inside here. Now in Australia, we got two of her CDs as special tour editions. We got Immaculate Collection and Erotica. And they both had gold CDs. This one's got a lovely picture disc. And the Erotica one had a fold-out poster, which unfortunately has broken off. But these the Erotica one. Special Tour Edition Erotica commemorating Madonna's first Australian tour, November, December 1993. Now I've always wanted this CD, but unfortunately this is a bootleg, a very well made bootleg, but it has the six singles that were off Erotica and it was released in Brazil. Now there are also a couple of bootleg releases from The Girly Show and I would have to say my all time favorite vinyl of The Sydney Show is these two vinyls they are recorded so well so i actually really adore them even though they're not official now 
I love the girly show so much that I got two t-shirts made when I went to the celebration tour in New York this year. So let me show you those. The first one I got, I wanted to have a little bit of me in my Madonna t-shirt. So I got the G, which stands for G for GVB, which is the same logo as the G on the girly show. So that was on the front, right on the chest, and on the back, I got an M, which is also in the girly show writing. But on the sleeve, this is probably my favorite part, it's a little bit of a deep cut into Madonna, but we can see this little hand-drawn um, ringmaster, which if anybody knows the Icon magazine, which I'll show you my collection later, Madonna used to write a letter. And in here, that is where I got the picture. I wore that on the first New York show. And then on the second New York show, I made this t-shirt. It uses the same writing as the Girly Show logo, but it says, yes sir, Mrs. Sir, yes sir, which Madonna chanted during a holiday. And on the back has the same M, but on the sleeve this time, I got the Girly Show logo. If you haven't already, you should check out this vlog here, click, which is where Chris and I went to New York and saw Madonna. And we got to walk on her stage and I was wearing this exact t-shirt. So yeah, that's my Girly Show collection. <laughs>items in here that I think are really cool. There's the pink double vinyl DJ special pressing. There's also the satin digipack. And I want to show you my favorite one, which is the beautiful, um, almost, I know you haven't have to describe it, the metallic um, bedtime story single 12 inch. This is absolutely stunning. So during the years of 1995 to 1997, Madonna started working on her voice. So Madonna was working with Joan Later for her preparation for the movie Evita. She released a, another greatest hits album, but of ballads called Something To Remember, which had three new songs on it. Also, in 1996, this amazing Japanese box set, Madonna CD Singles Collection, came out. And let me open it up. It has this beautiful little booklet that has all the lyrics to the songs that are included. And it has these tiny little three inch CD singles, which is so cute, which go all the way up to one more chance from the Something To Remember album. I love this item. It's quite a rare item that people often want. Yeah, that's great.
Madonna was working on her voice for the movie Evita. She'd been working with a voice coach named Joan Lader, and Joan Lader is an Estelle master trainer. So Estelle voice training looks at how the voice works, what's the physiology, the anatomy of the instrument, and how we can get those sounds to work in each person. Now, I don't know if you know what I do for work other than just laying out Madonna stuff, but I work as a vocal coach and a singing teacher and I'm obsessed with how the voice works. Over the last 12 years, I've been quite heavily involved with Estelle voice training, and in 2020, I also became an Estelle master trainer. So, I don't have clients like Joan later, that's for sure, but check out what I do. Just have a look at this link here, and I know you might find it interesting. I think vocally this is my favorite era of Madonna from something to remember to Evita and then when we get to Ray of Light in a second. <sighs> I love her voice in this time, it is so good. So here it is, my next all time favorite album, almost equal with Erotica, it is Madonna's Ray of Light. I remember the very early days of the internet Madonna released some little samples of the song, little 30 second snippets, and I couldn't stop listening to the song Frozen, which was the lead single. It just blew my mind. The sound was so different to anything that she's done before. Her voice sounds amazing on the album, and I love this album so much. Let's unpack it all, and we'll have a look at some of my favorite items. Okay, just quickly because I'm running out of time. This is taking me so long to do. But let me show you a couple of my favorite items from the Ray of Light era. One is the lenticular, beautiful holographic CD that was limited edition when the album came out. And then for the 25th anniversary, I believe it was 25th, this beautiful vinyl slipcase came out that also has that holographic look to it. So yeah, they're probably for the album my favorite items, but there is one promo over here which I think is beautiful and it is the promo for the song A Little Star which Madonna wrote about her daughter. I think this promo is beautiful. <music> the 2000s now and I am just going to go straight ahead and unpack Madonna's music album.
Okay, we are up to Madonna's second greatest hits album titled GHV2. It was originally going to be called The Second Coming, but they simplified the title. But I reckon this album has the coolest promo um, items, so I'll show you a couple of them in a second. love this 10 inch CD sleeve which has all these pictures, has a CD in there and under this sticker apparently said forthcoming album the second coming. Here is another super rare item in my collection. It is the Thunderpuss Mega Mix. Pretty happy that's in my collection too. Okay, we are up to 2003, which included Madonna's American Life album. Um, do I have any stories about this era? Other than I really love the work that she has done with Me Away. I think their music is stunning. But let's just get going because I'm running out of time. Okay, it's 2005 and Madonna releases this epic album, Confessions on a Dance Floor. Now this one is on limited edition pink vinyl, yet you can still buy this. Um, I think they just keep reprinting it, so I don't know how limited it actually is anymore. Now, I'm going to be a little controversial here and say this is, and I'm sorry, my least favorite Madonna album. Despite how popular it is and how many people would put this as their top album, I personally just find it a bit meh, but I'm so sorry. Please don't hate me in the comments. Um, it is a good album. I just don't really listen to it that much. I forgot to add this to the Confessions collection. Let me just put that down now. Now, I am in a state of bother because bum, 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 I am up to having to put things on the stairs, which I wasn't going to do, but I ran out of room. Oh, okay. We are moving on to Madonna's. Oh, by the way, if I'm shiny, I am sweating. This is hard work. Yesterday, I was laying all of the records out in preparation for today and I managed to do 15,000 steps just by preparing all the all of the collections in their little orders and today I've got the aircon going I am boiling and I've already done 7,500 just making this video I haven't even left the house it's, it's insane but let's get on to hard candy so in 2008, Madonna released her album Hard Candy. Now I have to say, this is probably the worst artwork for an album cover for Madonna. That's just my opinion. So Hard Candy had three singles from it 
and it had the song Four Minutes, which she sung with Justin Timberlake, and that was her last number one song. Okay, I'm not nervous about this at all. Two thousand and nine saw Madonna releasing her third greatest hits album called Celebration, which is what she named her latest tour after the Celebration tour. So here is the original four LP record, and which has just been re-released for all the fans, which I'm pretty happy about. Although this isn't worth as much anymore because of it. So let's go put all the Celebration stuff on the stairs. Madonna fan club exclusive vinyl called Broken. It wasn't included on any Madonna albums. This is the only place it's been officially released and Chris got this as a wedding present to me. So I love it. Came on pink vinyl and I had just ended my fan club membership maybe a couple of years before when this came out, but I love it. So after the Celebration album, Madonna moved record companies from Warner Brothers to Interscope and she released three albums um, with them before returning back to Warner Brothers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them all out on the stairs, the three albums, and then I will go through and talk about a couple of items in there because I'm just so scared I'm going to knock all these over so I need to concentrate. <music> Okay, I am hot. But anyway, let's have a look at what's going on here. So in 2012, Madonna released the album MDNA and also had a wonderful tour called the MDNA Tour. Now that tour was meant to come to Australia, um, but then at the last minute she pulled the plug on it and I was devastated. And my boyfriend at the time, couldn't understand how or why I was even upset because I hadn't seen Madonna since the girly show and um, we're not together anymore. He just didn't get it, did he? So this album didn't really have a great lot of success here. It made it to number one, but then it was off the charts like within two weeks or something crazy like that. But let me show you this really cool holographic sleeve. This was the first of the three holographic sleeves that Madonna released for anniversaries. I think this was for the 10th anniversary of MDNA. It must be because it's not 15 years yet. And then she did the Ray of Light in American Life. But I think this is stunning and it's actually worth quite a bit because it was only 600 made. As we head up the stairs, we have Give Me All Your Lovin', Girl Gone Wild and some promos of Turn Up The Radio, Superstar and the MDNA World Tour. So this awesome album, yet unfortunate album, had a poor start to its life with a whole bunch of its tracks being leaked months before the album was scheduled to come out. And there were some pretty amazing mixes that were in those leaked ones. Even the title track, Rebel Heart, which was produced at the time by Avicii, sounded amazing. But when the album eventually came out, a lot of the songs had been redone, including that. And some of them I don't think are as good, but this album is amazing, but it feels like it just hasn't had the love that it deserved. And also the Rebel Heart Tour finally came to Australia and Chris and I saw it in Philadelphia in the US. We saw it in Melbourne and we saw it in Sydney, that's the place. I'll come back to the tour stuff in a second, but let me just show you Madame X. So here is Madame X. I really love this album. It was produced by Mirways, who worked on Madonna's American Life album. And I think it's probably her most creative album that she had had for quite some time. And it's beautiful. Um, this is upside down, let me fix those. But it has some really great items that came with this. Had three different album covers, had a rainbow picture disc, 
four different colors of vinyl, including, I'll see if I can get this one without breaking anything. So, this one came out on blue vinyl. Now that might just seem like, eh, it doesn't seem like much, but it was only available for, I reckon, about two hours before they all sold out. I think there was only a thousand of them made. So I was lucky enough to be one of those people that got one. And also, it was also released in a box set, which came with a seven inch vinyl, cassette, a CD, and some like, I think it's transfers. We also got a Friday, Black Friday record store day release for the single I Rise, which is so nice to finally get a single on vinyl. But let me show you these awesome items down here. These are the French promo singles and I love them. I'm obsessed with CD single card sleeves. So these are the original French promos that were released before the album came out. And I love them. I think they're beautiful. They're on a CDR on the inside, but the cases are freshly printed. So Chris and I were lucky enough in 2019 and 2020 to go to the US and the UK to go and see the Madame X tour. I'll show you some tour stuff in a second, but these are the vinyls that were released many years later. And when we went to the Madame X tour in London, I think two of our shows had already been cancelled at that time due to Madonna's injuries. We had to book a show to, to, to go and see because when we arrived we had emails for both of our shows having been cancelled. So we quickly jumped online at the airport and bought some tickets because I didn't want to miss out. And it actually turned out that, what was it, two weeks later, COVID hit and everything shut down. So I'm so glad that we got to see it. It was an amazing show. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go just to the top of these stairs to where that table is and have a look at my Rebel Heart, Madam X and Celebration Tour items. I actually didn't realize how much stuff that I actually have until now. It's quite a bit daunting and I don't know what to talk about anymore um so let me just have a quick look at this table with the madame x and the rebel heart stuff for you and most of it will be in a musical montage tour, Rebel Heart tour, Rebel Heart tour, Celebration tour, Celebration tour, and the best. We were lucky enough to go to Madonna's Tears of a Clown show at the Forum Theatre in Melbourne, which was awesome. So in order to get tickets to that show, you have to enter a competition on Instagram. I think it was all socials where you just needed to send a photo of you and something Madonna related, which I did and won two tickets. But then I also won another two tickets by had to write in 25 words or less a Madonna story. And it was to win tickets through um, Telstra here in Australia. And I wrote about me being grounded for going to In Bed With Madonna twice, like I told you earlier. So <laughs> it got me tickets and got my friends some tickets and it was an amazing night. So that night at the forum was a very, very late night and it wasn't until after midnight we finally got into the forum and we saw Madonna perform an exclusive show to a thousand people with songs that she's never performed before at the time and told stories, told jokes and it was a truly amazing experience 
and the next day I had to go to do a short course which started at I think 8 in the morning and I was so tired because we didn't get back until about 4 or something but yeah whew, it was so good <laughs> So these here are the wristbands from the celebration tour. These two were when we were in London and these two were from New York when we had the immaculate package. So with the celebration tour, like I mentioned before, Chris and I spent up big and got an immaculate package, which gave us an exclusive, very quick tour on the actual stage, which was pretty amazing to stand on the stage and actually realize how thin some of those walkways are. They're, they're quite small. And not only that, we got this amazing item. So the bag is beautiful, but what came inside the bag was this awesome puffer jacket. So let me show you it. The front has the Celebration Tour logo and random ribbon that's attached to a zip on the side if you reverse you turn it over you can see the logo that was for the tour now let me show you what happens when I open it so inside this jacket is one of the most awesome prints that I have ever seen the whole lot is covered in like a collage of Madonna pictures all quite sexy pictures to a celebration tour logo in the style of Madonna's sex book. So along with that jacket, the celebration tour also gave a re-release of this Blonde Ambition iconic jacket with the crown on the back that you see Madonna famously wear in the movie In Bed With Madonna. Okay, so we are now up to 2022 and the final release from Madonna is the Finally Enough Love 50 number one box set. She's back at Warner Brothers and there was quite a few variations. I made a really cool stop motion of this unboxing. So maybe I can show that in the video in a sec, just so you can see what the whole vinyl looks like. And then this was a re-release with rainbow colors. So this one's red and black. This one has six different color vinyls inside. But yeah, she's had 50 number one dance singles, which is phenomenal. Would you believe that we are getting to the very end of my but not a collection? I have a feeling that I have recorded about four hours of footage that I don't know how long you people are going to want to watch all of this. But let's have a look at the last few items that are on this table. Another really cool promo item from the Manamex era is this viewfinder. Reminds me of my childhood. Got different pictures of Madonna. And also some really, really cool, finally enough love, sunnies, promo sunnies. But let's have a look up here. So here is my Icon Madonna Fan Club magazine collection. This is from an artist on Instagram. I've forgotten their name now, but I'll put it up just here and you can look them up. Does this beautiful artwork. It's not a comic book looks. Chris got me this for my birthday this year. I think these pictures are stunning. So check out their art. I think it's really quite amazing. I have my Evita movie program. So when we went and saw the movie, you've got this program. And also here are all my sheet music books for all the Madonna albums up to celebration. Hard Candy didn't have one and they joined Madonna and Like a Virgin in one book.
So like I said last night, I would have spent maybe four or five hours laying all of this out and also sneakily filming the tour item section of this video. But today I started at around 7.30 laying all of this out and it is now quarter to one. So it has taken some serious time, but what I'm going to do is we're gonna have a big walk around, have one final look and then I will say bye-bye and let's have a look at everything. I know this has been very unlike any other vlog that I have done, but I gained a whole bunch of subscribers from my Madonna videos and I wanted to let you all in on a little bit of my love of Madonna. Just a little bit. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. I have enjoyed putting it all out. Not gonna enjoy putting it all back. But you know what, what would be really helpful if you did enjoy this vlog is to click that subscribe button. It makes a huge difference and maybe other people will get to see this video. Maybe share this video if you want. So next week I will be returning to my normal vlogging. It's my husband's Chris's birthday so we're going to vlog all about his celebrations. But um, I'm all done, I'm about to pack up and see you next week.